Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem decode string. This is different than the recent problem that we solved which was encode and decode string. This is a much different problem even though it has pretty much the exact same name. So in this case we are given an encoded string based on certain rules and we want to return the decoded string. So the, the main rule here is that we could have some text that basically fits this little pattern over here. K, basically K is gonna represent some integer and then we're gonna have some brackets and these brackets are gonna contain some characters. So for example, we could have something like uh, down here you see, right? We see a two and then we see a B, C. Basically what this means is that this integer over here, uh, in this case two, represents how many times we are gonna repeat this input, st th this string that's inside of the brackets. So how would we replace a string like this? We'd replace it with two consecutive BCs. So we'd get BC and BC. Of course, if we had a three over here, uh, then we'd get three BCs, something like this, right? So that's the general rule. So. It seems pretty straightforward, right? So given a string like this, of course we could decode it, right? We have three A's, we'd get three you know, A's at the beginning, then we have two BC, then we'd have uh, a BC and a BC, and then you can see this string does equal what the expected output happens to be. But the difficult thing about this problem is that these brackets can actually be nested. Now there's always guaranteed to be an integer you know, right before a opening bracket, which is good. There's, you know, these all of these input strings are going to be valid. So there's always going to be an integer before some brackets, and the brackets are always going to contain some characters inside of it. But it could be nested similar to the second example, right? We could have brackets, and then we could have some string, right? A. Uh, then we'd have a two because this two belongs to the next pair of brackets, uh, like this. So then how would you decode a string like this? And let's actually add the three at the beginning. So what does this tell us? This tells us three, this three applies to everything that's inside of these brackets, right? So we want to multiply this string three times. How do we figure out this string? Well, we got to start with the first character A, and then we get to a two, which belongs to this bracket. So you can see that we have a sub problem inside of the original problem. So you can think that this problem might lend itself to some kind of recursive solution. So now that we got into this two, this two will represent uh, basically this. So then we're gonna go through uh, inside of this bracket, we're gonna see, okay, everything that's inside of here is a C. We get to the closing bracket. That means we, we're done with this sub problem, right? This evaluates to a C, but this C has to be multiplied twice. So then we're gonna get two, or basically C, C, and this two, you know, is done, right? We're done with that two. And of course, at the beginning, we had the lowercase character A. So now these, the problem has changed into this, uh, right? So inside of the brackets, we have A, C, C. We, we can multiply this out three times and we'll just get that uh, kind of string three times. You can see that's what the expected output is. So this nested bracket is basically going to be the only like complicated logic within this problem. And there's a couple solutions to actually solve it. So let's go over that and then we can go into the code. So like I said, the nested brackets is what's going to be what makes this problem difficult. So you can think that one possible way we could have nested brackets is, you know, we have some outer brackets and then inside those we have one single uh, nested bracket and then inside of that we have another nested bracket. What would kind of the decision tree or the sub problem tree look like? Well, of course, you know, we'd have the original outer brackets uh, on the outside and then within that we'd have another sub problem a, another nested brackets and then another nested brackets, right? So to solve this outside problem, first we'd have to solve this problem. And to solve this problem, we would have to solve the next uh, sub problem over here, right? So then once we've solved this one, then we can pop back up, you know, possibly recursively. Recursively is a valid way to solve this problem. We could pop back up to here, solve that problem, and then we could pop 
back up to the root and solve that problem. So a recursive solution is, is kind of the first intuitive way that I really think of to solve this problem. Of course, we could have a different nested structure, something like this one. So, you know, we have the outside uh, br uh, brackets, right? That's one uh, possible way. And then inside of that single bracket, we have three different nested brackets. So then, you know, our recursive decision tree might look something like this, right? A little bit of a different tree in this case. In this case, we have three child nodes. So, you know, to solve this outer problem, we'd have to first solve this problem, and then we'd have to solve this problem, and then we'd have to solve this problem. And then once we've solved all three of those, then we can pop back up and then do this one. So intuitively, we can recursively solve this problem. And we don't really, since we're doing it recursively, if we did it like that, we wouldn't have to maintain like a stack. We wouldn't need any extra memory because the recursive call stack would basically tell us where to actually pop back up to. But as you might be able to tell, you, when you have problems with nested brackets or nested parentheses, usually a stack is very helpful. And that's actually the way I'm going to be solving this problem. You can do it recursively, or we can actually maintain a stack, which will kind of explicitly tell us, you know, once we're done with a sub problem, where to pop back up to. So let me just go through a very quick walkthrough of what the solution would be. So suppose we had some nested brackets like these. So what we're going to start off by doing is just going character by character in the input string and then just adding it to the stack. So we'd first see the five. We'd recognize that, yes, it's a digit. We're pretty sure that there's probably going to be a upcoming opening bracket, but we're not going to do anything until there is. So then we're going to see the four, the next character. We can go ahead and add that to the stack as well. Now we get to an opening bracket. We're going to do the exact same thing this time, still adding it to the stack, but we're going to obviously recognize that we are inside of a sub problem now. Every opening bracket is guaranteed to be, you know, followed by a closing bracket at some point. So we know that this sub problem will end at some point. For now, we're going to keep going. So we're going to go character by character, making sure to add it to the stack. So we add the lowercase a, add the lowercase b, we add another digit now a six and then we get to another opening bracket and we go ahead and add that to the stack as well so now when we find a closing bracket and this is going to be the first closing bracket we find it's not going to be applied to the original opening bracket it's going to be applied to this opening bracket because this is the most recent opening bracket and we can detect that from our stack right we're going to start at the beginning of our stack keep going this way until we get to the opening bracket and this is the first one that's gonna be uh, matched with a closing bracket. But for now, what we're gonna do is go character by character. Okay, we see a lowercase c, we see a lowercase d, we can add that to the stack as well. And now we get to a, our first closing bracket. And so this is the only condition. The, the closing bracket is really the only spot where we're going to do something different. We're, of course, not going to take this closing bracket and add it to the stack, right? Because in our solution, we don't really care about the brackets. All we know now is we've just completed this uh, bracket uh, position, right? So everything that was inside of this bracket, how do we get everything that was inside? We know it's a CD. How do we get that? Well, we're going to go to the top of our stack, right? We're going to pop. It, we're basically, we're going to pop every single character from the stack. So we're going to pop this lowercase d. We're going to pop this lowercase c. So at this point, we've popped CD. And then we're going to pop this opening bracket. Uh, and that's going to be the last character we pop, right? Once we've popped an opening bracket, we're done. We've gotten our string CD, right? And what do we want to do with this string CD? Well, we want to take whatever integer was before it in the brackets. It could have been a single digit integer like six, or it could even be a double digit integer like 54. But either way, we want to get that uh, integer. How are we going to get it? Well, at the top of our stack, we just popped the opening bracket. So now we're going to keep popping characters from the top of our stack while the character happens to be a digit. How do we know if it's a digit? If it's between zero, one, to all the way up until nine, right? If it's one of those 10 digits, then we can, uh, but then we are gonna be popping it. So in this case, we pop just a single six because the next character happens to be a lowercase b, that's not a digit. So we're basically gonna say six multiplied by cd. So of course, that's what's gonna go in the output. And what we're actually gonna do now is take this six CD and actually add it to the stack six times, right? We're basically gonna take CD and add it six times uh, over here. So 
I'm not actually going to draw that out because it's going to be very long, but I hope at this point you actually get the idea of what this algorithm is going to do. Let's just dry run through kind of the rest of it. So we finished this part and we actually got to the second closing bracket now too, right? So we're not going to add this to our stack, but what are we going to do? We're going to basically keep popping everything from the stack until we get to the opening bracket that's over here, right? So once we've done that, we're going to have this entire th thing. We're basically going to have this AB portion and we're going to have this 6CD portion. And then uh, we've popped all of that. And then to the left, we're going to find another integer. In this case, the integer is 54. So what we're going to do is take everything that's here, everything that we just popped and multiply it by 54. What do I mean by everything? Well, this AB that we just popped is going to be multiplied by 54. And this 6CD is also going to be multiplied by 4. So basically, if we had 6 CDs consecutively, so basically this entire string would now be multiplied by 54. That's what I mean by when I say the brackets can be nested, right? This 54, basically this CD string was first multiplied by 6, right? 6 multiplied by CD, and then we multiplied it by 54. So this CD portion of the string got multiplied you know, a couple hundred times. And then finally, we would have our output string once we've done all that, those operations on our stack, and then we could return that uh, output string. So that is all for the explanation. Now we can dive into the code, get into the code. And like I said, the main thing we're going to be using here is a stack. We're not going to do this recursively. By stack, I basically mean a, you know, an array list. What we're going to do is we're basically going to put every single character on here. And then at the end, we're going to be joining that stack, basically joining all of those substrings and then returning that joined string as an output string, which is the format that they want. But for now, we can go through character by character. And remember, there's two main cases. One is if the character is not a closing bracket, right? If it's not a closing bracket, then we can go ahead and just add that character to the stack. This is the most straightforward case. The more complicated case is going to be the else case where we do find a closing bracket. Now, remember, there were two main phases of if we found a closing bracket. Well, we're, of course, we're not going to add this closing bracket to the, the, to the stack, but what we are going to do is start popping from the stack now. What we're trying to pop is the substring. So initially, we're going to set the substring empty. We're going to keep popping until we get to the opening bracket, right? We want to get the substring that was inside of this nested bracket. So while the top of the stack is not equal to the opening bracket, we're going to keep popping. Now, I'm allowed to say while not equal to the opening bracket because we're guaranteed to find some opening bracket, right? The stack is never going to become empty before we find an opening bracket. So we want to pop a character from the stack. But what, what do we want to actually do with this character? Well, we're just going to add it to that substring that we just declared up above. Uh, we're going to add it to the beginning of the substring, uh, whatever the character we popped is. And we're going to keep doing that until the, you know, we've gotten to the opening bracket. Once we're done with that, we will have our substring. And actually, we're going to do one more pop because we want to make sure that we actually do pop that opening bracket. So we'll have one more pop. And then after that, now we want to get the integer that came before that opening parenthesis, right? Right. We want to get whatever K value was preceding those brackets. So we're going to do kind of a similar thing here while in this case, we do want to make sure our stack is non empty. So while stack is non empty and while the top of the stack happens to be a digit in Python, the good thing is we can do this pretty easily. We can just check. There's actually a function for uh, strings. We'll check if this string, this character is a digit. And while that happens to be the case, we want to pop this digit of course it's going to be in the form of a character and we want to add it to that string that we just declared up above that k string we want to add this to the beginning because we want to make sure the order is preserved so every time we pop a character we're going to add it to the beginning of that k string so then once this loop is done executing we will have k you know some integer it could be a single digit it could be double digit some integer will be inside k and then 
Now we have what we need, right? We popped that entire substring and we popped K. What did we want to do when we were done with that? Well, we wanted to take the substring and then uh, append it to the stack K times, right? In Python, thankfully, it's easy. We don't have to write a loop to do that. We don't have to append it K times. What we can just say is stack dot append uh, this substring multiplied k times, right? So we can say k times the substring. But of course, k in this case is a string. So in Python, we can convert it to an integer pretty easily, just like this. So we're appending this substring to the stack k times by just, in Python, you can literally multiply a string, which makes things pretty easy for us. That's what we're doing here. And then once that is entirely finished, we are pretty much done with this loop. And then we can go ahead and return the solution. But remember, we can't just return the stack because the stack has a list of substrings, right? That's kind of how we uh, implemented this. But we just want to take the stacks. The stack has all the characters that we need. We just want to join them. So in Python, you can say uh, empty string dot join it with everything in the stack. And then all the you know, the, the stack will basically be in the correct format that they wanted. They wanted it to be a output string. So that's what we're doing here. And that is the entire code. Now the time complexity is a little bit uh, complicated to analyze because it's gonna depend on what the input is, right? So on the left, you can see that yes, this solution works and it is efficient. So you, we know that it is an efficient solution. It's limited based on what the input is, right? So of course in the input, we could have like a million, uh, you know, A, B or whatever. That means we have to multiply this string a million times so the output is going to depend on that but this is about as good as you can get this algorithm i would say it's a linear time algorithm so i hope that this was helpful if it was please like and subscribe it supports the channel a lot and i'll hopefully see you pretty soon thanks for watching